welcome back to the channel it's another reading vlog this week i'm of course starting on the reading vlog in front of my son's school waiting for him to get out of school but um i'm starting out with another book this week that is actually due i have to return it this week so <laughs> that's why i'm starting out with this book and because i've been wanting to read this i forgot who it was that recommended this book from one of the booktubers i follow but um it's the memory house it's by rachel hawk i believe she's a christian author i could be wrong i'm not exactly sure but um let me read you the back of the book it says when beck holiday lost her father in the north tower on 9 11 she also lost her memories of him 18 years later she's a tough new york city cop burdened with a damning damaging secret suspended for misconduct and struggling to get her life in order meanwhile a mysterious letter arrives informing her she's inherited a house along florida's northern coast and what she discovers there will change her life forever matters of the heart only become more complicated when she reconnects with handsome bruno endicott a driven sports agent who fondly recalls the connection they shared as teenagers but beck doesn't remember that either decades earlier Widow Everlay Applegate lives a steady, uneventful life with her widowed mother after a tornado ripped through Waco, Texas and destroyed her dreams for the future. When she runs into an old high school friend, Don Callahan, she begins to yearn for change. Yet no matter how much she longs to love again, she is hindered by a secret she can never share. Fifty years separate the women, but through the power of love and the miracle of faith, they each find healing in a beautiful Victorian known affectionately as the Memory House. So, it just sounds so good. I've, I just got through reading A Walk to Remember, and I've seen that movie so many times. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, like I was saying, I watched A Walk to Remember, and um, I've seen the movie more times than I can count. But that book still got me. It was the first time I read the book. And it was so emotional. I mean you cry throughout. I feel like you cry throughout the whole book. There's like happy tears. And tears of joy. Tears of sorrow. Heartbreak. Sadness. I'm still thinking. I'm still. I stayed up till 1 o'clock last night. Finishing almost 1 o'clock. It was like. 1257 or something like that finishing a walk to remember because I didn't want to go to bed until I finished it I probably should have went to bed and just finished it but it was so sad I have a feeling that this is also going to bring me tears <laughs> these are books about faith and um they just I don't know they touch me I guess I don't know but I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, I'm not sure what book I'm, what library book I'm going to read after this. But I do know what book, at least I think I know what book I'm going to pick up off my uh, bookshelf. And I'll try, I wanted to take y'all with me to my bookshelf to pick the book. But then I just didn't. <laughs> it was, I started, I went and picked the book later at night when my, when I was with my husband and my son so i didn't want to take y'all with me so maybe this week i'll take you with me to my bookshelf and you can see the book i end up picking off my shelf and get a little peek at my bookshelf because i do have a new bookshelf that my husband built for my for after christmas he got it for me so which has books on it i have like a one section for like christian romance books and then there's another section for my fantasy books i even have a shelf that's reserved just for my library tbr <laughs> that i put my library books on and then i have ones that are my contemporary romance books so like my secular contemporary romance secular books but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and start reading this and i'll i'll try to give any updates if i feel the need to <laughs> Hi guys, <laughs> so I just finished the memory house this morning. I was spent, because I was so close to being done, I spent 
most the rest of the morning when I came home from getting my son I just stopped at Dunkin got me a coffee and a sandwich there for breakfast and I ended up coming straight to the house doing my doing my daily devotionals and reading my bible and then I went straight to reading this book because there was like that much left of it and I knew I could finish it before having to pick up my son so I just finished this and oh my gosh I love this book so much I know that there's more within this I don't think they're like connected but that's like a series that's not connected standalone a standalone series but there's like the wedding dress and I forget there's other ones that go within this oh here it is so it's on the back here so you have the wedding dress the writing desk and the love letter here so i want to read those now after reading the memory house but this made me giddy and made me cry there was sad moments happy moments swoon moments with the guys i really love this so it it has a then and now story time and there's um four protagonists four main characters and the now story time you're with beck and bruno and um it starts out with uh beck she works for the nypd in new york and um she's running down she's chasing down this uh rich entitled rich kid who um is running once again from the law apparently he has all his family has a lot of money he had every opportunity to do whatever he wants with his life but he's running around pushing drugs on the streets um and when she catches up finally catches up to him she finds out that he has a dog that he has been feeding drugs to to transport drugs and the dog is like looks like a one of those dogs you see on tv that's been neglected and abused um and she gets so mad that she starts beating him up even though she knows it's not the right thing to do and then she just walks out and takes the dog with her to the vet clinic and she has a reputation for being like a hard cop somebody who's like ice cold and has no feelings but um she starts having feelings she's um and then you find out that she's pregnant from some other guy who she was um it was her boss that um they had just one night together they were they were uh wallowing in their sorrows when they lost the case and then they were both drinking and had too much to drink and they ended up in a closet together and it doesn't allude to anything this is uh, a clean i want to say to a christian romance book but um because there's a lot of mentions of faith in God, found faith, and trusting in God, and all that throughout the whole book. And it was just beautiful. So, she ends up with him that one night in the closet, and turns out she's pregnant. Um, she goes to leave because she had, the next day she has to be at she, the, um, her boss tells her he wants to see her in the office first thing and she ends up getting suspended for a whole month with no pay because of beating up the cut that guy because he was handcuffed and defenseless and apparently he's like pressing charges or whatever so he had to get him to stop pressing charges he had to tell him that they he would give her a month off with no pay and then when she comes home finding out that she's not going to be at the police office for a month she's like i don't know what i'm going to do with myself for a whole month here she's pregnant she hasn't told anybody she's pregnant um but she tells she tells him when she goes to leave out of the office because he was like asking her what's going on you're not normally like this you don't normally care this much about anything and she tells him when she's getting ready to leave that she's pregnant. And then she runs into her other superior, the one that she had an affair with, and tells him, too, that she's pregnant. <clears throat> it turns out that he's already told his wife 
and they've been in marriage counseling and working through it but he promised his wife that it didn't end up in her having a baby well <laughs> turns out that it did and she just hasn't been telling anybody she's been keeping it a secret and trying to ignore it but um you can only ignore pregnancy for so long, am I right? <laughs> Before it starts showing. So when she gets back home after all of this happens, she has a letter. Her mom, she still lives with her mom. Her mom says, there's this letter for you that came in the mail. And it looks like it's the last will and testament. The last will and testament of this Miss Everlay. And um, she has no idea why she... Um, she has no idea who this is. Her dad died in 9-11 uh, rescuing. She knows that her dad died in 9-11 rescuing, trying to rescue people from the Twin Towers when they went down. But she that's she only knows that, I think, because her mom told her. All, all memories surrounding her dad, she's, like, kind of had amnesia about. So she doesn't remember who this lady is. Why? And she's leaving her, her house and... Um, pretty much leaving everything to her her house and um all her money and everything it's just leaving to her and her will and she doesn't know why so she kind of travels to florida <clears throat> to try to see if she can figure out why she left her the house and who this woman is and um needless to say when she gets to florida she runs into this guy his name is bruno and apparently they were childhood friends and she used to um she used to go down there uh every summer with her dad everything and spend time at the miss Arvillay's house and they would spend time together they were best of friends during those during those summers when she was down there and they just start talking again and getting to know each other again and everything. But then you have the then timeline, which takes place in the 1950s. And it's with Miss Everlay. And it talks about her life. She had a tragedy happen to her also. There, she lived in Waco, Texas. And um, there was a tornado that came through. And... She hid it. She was all by herself at the house, but they had a like a storm shelter that she went and hid in when she heard the storm was getting really bad with her dogs that she had. And um, after that, after the math of that happened, people discovered her in the cellar. She found out that there was like all the houses were blown over. None of them had made it. Um, in the tornado, uh, through the tornado, and not long after that, she finds out that her husband, then Rhett, he had died in the tornado. They had his body, and um, and she kind of just stopped living her life after that. She she promised. She said she promised at his funeral that he would never be forgotten. That she would always remember him. And then she kind of just stopped living her life. She stayed with her mom. Her, her mom is also a widow, too. So she was treating her like just some old widow, even though she's in her, like, late 20s, early 30s, I think. And she's living like she's an 80-year-old widow with her, her life half in a grave and not even really living. And then she meets this guy named Don, um, which she already knew him. I don't remember how. But she already knew him, and he starts pr talking to her. He asks her out on a date. She goes, and she tells her mom, it's just dinner. That's what she keeps saying. <laughs> it's just dinner. But then things just keep progressing, and she ends up falling for him. He ends up falling for her and wants her to marry him. And she doesn't know if that's what she wants because... She doesn't want to forget about Rhett, and she promised that she wouldn't um, ever forget him and, his, and the memory of his funeral. So that's pretty much what the book is about. You find out more about uh, Everlay and then Dawn and their love story, and then Beck and Bruno and his love story and what they're going through. And through all of this, there's found faith with Beck and uh, Bruno. Beck starts going to 
church and stuff and found faith and um and she and um just so much i really really enjoyed this book oh it was so so good and the writing here is so beautiful there was some pages i marked where i just loved the writing so here it says <laughs> so here's one of them it says she knew it was a reflux, but when Bruno snatched her hand as they finished the chorus, electricity fired through her, and for one blissful moment, she felt with felt one with something beautiful and grand. And that was with Beck and Bruno. And here I found this one that I really, really liked. It says, we're dolling you up. This was with Evelyn when she is trying she starts seeing Dawn and she has one date with Dawn and then she's like wanting to um get a new wardrobe and fix her hair and kind of she starts kind of coming back to the world back to life a little bit and um when she's in the hairdresser she says we're dolling you up but good this time she told she took the magazine let's see beauty is more than the latest hairstyle Llewellyn you took the words right out of my mouth she gazed at Everlay the, through the mirror, tapping her heart. If you don't have it going on in here, you don't don't matter what you go, you got going on out there. She circled her face with her hand. You could be Lana Turner or Marilyn Monroe on the outside, but if you ain't got Jesus on the inside, well, just leave your lipstick and mascara at home. Do you have Jesus on the ever on the inside, Everlay? She said yes. Since Miss Sonia stuck a flannel Jesus. <laughs> complete with red felt stripes on his back up on the board during vacation bible school Everlay believed but in truth she could do better live with a greater faith well then that's 80 percent of the battle the rest is getting this mess into shape <laughs> so that well i love that part where it was talking about um that but then here is this one was the last one that I marked and it was like the most beautiful one that I I just thought it was so beautiful this is with uh Beck and Bruno and a, she he's a sports agent who recruits for people for the NFL and um Beck is saying she said it says Beck listened as he ranted about his reputation and how sure he felt sorry for the kid who worked so hard but how many times did he have to say it no NFL franchise would touch him and why was he the only agent coach Brown kept calling maybe because he sees you have something other agents don't maybe he knows you're the only one who can make some NFL team consider Tyvis if isn't that what makes a, you a good agent Anyone can sell a Calvin Blue, but only the best can sell a Tyvis Powell. So Calvin Blue is rumored to be a first draft in the NFL drafts. And Tyvis Powell has a past, um, a record, and it seems nobody wants to touch him. So that's what they're talking about right here. And he says he got up from his chair and came around the desk. That would be akin to selling an snow to an Eskimo. And the best salesman convinces him it's sunshine, she says. Says he laughed, then drew her. This is the part that's absolutely beautiful. He said he laughed, then drew her to him, kissing her without hesitating or checking her eyes for permission, like his lips belonged on hers. So she tasted of his soul and drank from the well he offered. I just that tasted from his soul and drank from the well he offered i thought those were such beautiful words oh uh, so i'm gonna go because i need to return this to the library and i've been talking way too long i need to go return this to the library so i can uh, pick up the three books that i have on hold before they decide to put them back on the shelf and then once i get to my son's school i'll show you the next book that i'm going to be starting up reading hi guys so i'm back i'm at my son's school now and this is the book that i'm starting next the last word by taylor adams literally so excited for this book i need something that was the last book i read it was such a good heartwarming book but it was so heavy i was so much crying i need a book that's not gonna make me cry so 
this is the next one that I'm reading. And also, this is the next one that's due at my library next. That I actually it says there's like a couple holds. So, I need to, this one's the next one that I need to return to the library. So, that's why it's next on my list. And I'm sure you probably know what this book is about. Pretty much, I know it's what I know from people told me. It's about a person who writes a one star review for an author. And then, I guess the author comes for him. <laughs> That's what it. That's what everybody says when they read this book. But I'll read the synopsis. It's on the inside of the page. It says, after posting a negative book review, <laughs> a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous. In this pulse-pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror, from the critically acclaimed author of No Exit and Hairpin Bridge, which this is the first. Um, Taylor Adams book that I'm going to be reading. I haven't read No Exit. I do have it on my shelf to read No Exit, but it doesn't have any holds on it. So this is the one that I end up reading first. So it says Emma Carpenter is living in isolation with her golden retriever, Laika, house sitting in old beachfront home on the rainy Washington coast. Her only human contact is with her enigmatic elderly neighbor, Deke and via text with the house's owner, Jules. One day, she reads a poorly written but gruesome horror novel by the author H.G. Kane and posts a one-star review <laughs> that drags her into an online argument with none other than the author himself. Soon after, disturbing incidents start to occur at night. To Emma, this can't be just a coincidence. It was a strange enough it was strange enough for this author to bicker with her online about a lousy review. Could he be stalking her too? As Emma digs into Kane's life and work, she learns he has published 16 other novels, all similarly sadistic tales of stalking and murder. But who is he? How did he find her? And what else is he capable of? Displaying his trademark command of rapid fire pacing, unnerving atmosphere and razor sharp characterization taylor adams once again delivers a diabolically disturbing and deadly game of cat and mouse <laughs> sounds like it's gonna be so good if it's as good as it's sounding and the and everybody's talking about this i'll probably be able to read it in a couple days <laughs> so and then there's like this page here <laughs> that says this work this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents are all products of the author's imagination and are used fictitiously and are not to be constructed as real. Any resemblance to actual events, locals, organizations, or persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Are you sure? <laughs> so this came out last year, and I wanted to read it then too, but there are so many books and not enough time to read. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, there's so many books I want to read. And it's like, I got to read them all. But there's not enough time to read them all. I could, I could literally do nothing but read it. I still wouldn't be able to read all the books. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start this book. I did pick up some books from the library, which you're going to see. Hope, look, I'm praying you're going to see it before you see this vlog. Hopefully, I can do I can read this book. Today's Tuesday. Hopefully, I can finish this book on Wednesday and make it to my other book on Wednesday. Because I do have a book that I already picked off my shelf that was just calling to me. And it's not really a fiction. It's kind of like a, um, I want to say a memoir or, an, or a nonfiction you'll see when I show it to you but it's just a small novella so I figured that'll probably just take me a day or so to read my hope is to be finished reading all these books by Friday so it's Friday my son doesn't have school it's Lunar New Year and they gave them off of school for Lunar New Year and then Saturday I want to go visit my my uh, mom and dad so I'm not gonna usually I will edit my videos and post them on Saturdays with the exception of this last video which is I'm gonna try to edit when I get back to the house after picking up my son and have it be posting tonight um 
and then while it's like uploading to YouTube and stuff, I'll be continuing to read this book. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I don't even know how I'm still going. I did not sleep good at all last night. But yeah, I still feel so energized today. Barely had any sleep. Energy a thousand. I don't know. I don't understand it. Maybe it was the Dunkin' Coffee. I got a Dunkin' Coffee this morning, and I haven't had one in a long time. Use a gift card I had to get some coffee. Because so I thought, because uh, I'm just going to sit down and read a book. So I got a coffee and a breakfast sandwich and just drank that and ate the, the croissant while I was doing my devotional and reading my Bible and then reading my book. I was drinking the coffee the whole time trying to stay awake <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and read this and in another video that hopefully you'll see before that i don't know if you will honestly see it before this i want you to <laughs> but i don't know if you will because that means taking time away from reading my books we'll see it depends on how fast paced this book is and how much i get through it as to whether or not i will um as to whether or not i will um be able to finish the video because this these books are going to be going on my february tbr video it's already february and i haven't posted it most people posted theirs february 1st i'm already the second weekend of february and i haven't even posted it and i wanted to post it sometime this week but we'll see thursday i think is the day i was aiming to post it that means editing and um uploading in the same day which usually the tbr videos don't take me long to edit and everything so i don't know i guess we'll see <laughs> we'll see how this goes with my reading if i'm pretty fast at reading this book then i'll definitely be able to do that but depends on how this writing is whether it bores me or whether i oh no <laughs> i'm like so excited okay i'm gonna go ahead and start reading this book because i can literally get so much read while i'm waiting here for my son to come out of school i don't know why but i get a lot read <laughs> just i don't know if it's just something about sitting in the car i'm less distracted by things so i just i don't know i feel like i get the most read while i'm sitting here waiting for him to get out of school let me go read and stop talking <laughs> I'll give you an update when I'm done or if there's something that it's like extreme that happens I have a tendency to give more updates with thrillers so if there's any updates while I'm reading the book you know I'll be back in here letting you know <laughs> hi guys so it's the next day now and I'm about halfway through this book um it's so good like it starts out with the action right away as soon as you start reading the book, action. <laughs> like, it starts out right away. She's It's about this girl who's house-sitting for these properties that are off-season during the winter time. So, this takes place during the winter, and it's insane. <laughs> so... She's like, I guess that's her job is to watch this house and stay here during the off season. It's like in the middle of nowhere, but it's near a beach because she talks about walking to the beach. And then the only thing is she has a neighbor and they both have a telescope and a, and a whiteboard. So they're watching each other through the telescope and communicating that way. But she hasn't like actually talked to him in person. Um, but it starts out she's there in the house um <clears throat> and she's reading this book she writes a one star leaves the review and then the author the next day the author she finds out that she has a reply to her review so she goes and checks it and the author replied to her review asking her to take it down because it deters other people from reading her book because of the one star review and of course it doesn't really tell you like the whole one star review and what um i wonder if i can find it here where he read it it doesn't tell you in the beginning what the one star review was but um let me see if i can find it here in the book so here it says i finally found it here it says where he's finally at her door 
and he knocked on the door and before this she was already seeing like creepy things in the house she thought she was seeing stuff while she was sleeping in her room like watching her sleep and um <laughs> that was crazy but um and then there was a creepy part that happened where there was some dude in a mask that was like standing in front of the um camera because the door has one of those ring doorbells that has a camera so he was standing in front of the camera and just looking i guess to creep her out so he's now at the door this was a few days later and he's now at the door and he says and now i'll ask you one more time do you stand by your review she says nothing maybe there's no correct answer she hears a sharp crackle outside the door like paper unfolding of course she thinks of course he printed my review the voice clears his throat it's like a stern parent reviewing a report card this was the worst book i've ever read yes now she remembers it's not just crap he reads it's a giant 50 gallon cauldron brimming with cold ice cold diarrhea to any potential readers, I'll save you 99 cents. The hikers both die at the end. I'm not sure if the author has ever encountered a human female before, but at one point he likens their breasts to sumo citruses, a mental image I find viscerally terrifying. She had forgotten about that. Still true, though. And if you've ever seen a slasher movie, you'll protect every unrealistic trope. Of course the victims have no weapons. Of course there's no cell signal or to call the police. When one woman finds a truck, of course the engine won't start. When she takes refuge from the magically indestructible killer inside a cabin, of course she stupidly corners herself in a room with no exit. What are the odds of it all? Coincidences happen in real life, but in fiction, they're bad writing. And it says he pauses. There's more, she knows. But the voice outside has stopped himself, gathering his composure before continuing. She hears a shaky breath. I would rather die than read a murder mountain ever again. This is silence. When she typed that sentence days ago, she never expected to hear it spoken aloud at, at her front door. Then a draft of cold air strokes the back of Emma's neck and she remembers with a growing pit in her stomach. The back door is still open, just a few inches. Her dog, Lakia, is still outside. So that's the, her one-star review of the book. I think maybe she was a little bit harsh in her, <laughs> in her review. I mean, you could be nicer about giving a one-star review being like, this just wasn't a book for me. To me, it was too predictable or whatever. But, wow, I would rather die than read the book again. That is a little dramatic in my opinion. But, yeah, I am really enjoying this book. So, pretty much we're in the middle of him now. He's in the house. He's already tried to kill her dog. And she's, he's fed, he's, um, where she said her dog was outside. She found him outside. She kept calling him back. She thought he had already killed him. And, no. He fed her dog raw chicken breast with uh, rat poison embedded in it. <laughs> so she's been trying to make her dog throw up so he can throw up the poison and he won't die. <laughs> and now she's just like hiding around the house waiting for him to come at her and everything. And that's pretty much where we're at. He's still trying to get her. There was somebody that showed up. She thought it was the police and it was a FedEx guy. <laughs> He tricked her into thinking it was the police, but it was a FedEx guy that he ended up pretending he was police with. But yeah, this book is insane. I'm really liking it. It's super fast paced. I definitely think if I really try, I can finish reading this book today so I can start my next book tomorrow. But I am really liking this book. I think it's pretty good. Um... But I do think her review is a little harsh. <laughs> I agree with him. It's a little harsh, her review. I would never say that to a book, even if I do think the book is a one-star book. I would never say that 
<laughs> I would never write that type of review. It would be a nicer one-star review, that's for sure. Because, you know, not every book is for everyone. But, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get back to reading it. I don't want to keep this update too long. But, um, yeah, I'll let y'all guys know. I do have, oh, I do have a couple theories, which I did want to sprout that in here before I leave. Um, I have some thoughts. So... Like I said, the neighbor next door. I have a feeling that maybe he's the accomplice because he does have an accomplice. She realizes that when she, when the owner of the house sent her the picture of the ring doorbell, the picture of the person that was outside her doorbell, and she says it's a different person than this guy is, and then she, it makes her realize that he has an accomplice. Of course they do. <laughs> in all horror movies there's an accomplice think about scream there was an accomplice in that first book um or first movie but um of course he has an accomplice i have a feeling it might be the neighbor next door is the accomplice so the one that was caught in a picture with the mask on i feel like that might be her neighbor and then he mentions he talks about his mom sometimes when he's like because he's like writing the book as he as um as he's hunting her down he's writing a book called hunted beach or something like that it's like the hunted mountain but this is hunted beach because she's living near a beach so he's like writing the novel as we're going through the book also so we're getting like little excerpts of where he's written part of the novel that he's going to be releasing next so in in the beginning of his novel he talks some about his mom i think and my other theory is that maybe the lady that owns this house that she's been watching she's been staying and upkeeping the house and watching it for her during off season maybe that that lady is the killer's mom the writer's mom i don't know if any of my theories are correct and i'm not gonna i don't think i'm gonna tell y'all if i get any of my theories correct because then that would totally spoil the book but we'll see i usually have all these theories and i'm usually never right so if i'm right this time it'll be it'll be a miracle so i'm usually easily tricked with these books so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and go back to reading it is so good i can't wait to keep reading it and find out what happens next <laughs> because ooh, is it going down now okay bye guys hi guys so it's been a minute it's now super bowl sunday since i'm filming this and i haven't updated you guys on my reading i am done reading all the books i said i was going to read this week so First of all, with the last word from Taylor Adams, um, I need to return this on, on Monday. But um, this was really, really good. Every time I thought that it got to the twist, there was another twist in the book. And I really enjoyed it. The writing kept me engaged. It kept me um, wanting to read. When I wasn't reading the book, I was thinking about reading the book and what was going to happen. <laughs> So, I really, really enjoyed this book. I definitely would read more by Taylor Adams. Um, if you don't know what the book is about, I think I read those synopsis for you. But I give it five stars because there was just so many twists that I didn't expect. And I did tell you guys that I had like a theory. And I'm not going to tell, like I said before, I'm not going to tell you if I was right. You have to read the book for yourself to find out. But... It was really good. Um, there was some language in the book, but nothing that bothered me too much that I remember. So it wasn't too um explicit, I guess you could say. But um yeah, I really enjoyed it. Next book I ended up reading was a book that I chose off of my shelf, which is 37 seconds. This was just like a short little read. I haven't taken my bookmark out yet. <laughs> but this was just like a little short read. Um, it says, the day my son was born, I died. I had pre premonitions it was going to happen, but no one believed me. Even more unbelievable is what I would see when I flatlined for 37 seconds. So this is pretty much a woman's story. She kept on having these visions when she was pregnant that something was going to happen to her. That she was going to die. That she was going to have 
all these conditions. And she was going to every single doctor trying to figure out why she's having these. And um, pretty much she's freaking out the whole time before her birth. Um, and it's mostly about that. I thought this book was going to be more about the 37 seconds that she died and like what she's seen. But you barely get any of that part of the book. Most of the book is her freaking out because she's having these visions of... Um, what's going to happen to her. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it was interesting. I think I gave it, like, four stars. It's a memoir. I don't really like rating memoirs. But I think I gave this one, like, four stars because I thought it was going to be more about what happened in the 37 seconds that she died. And that was, like, at the very end of the book. And it wasn't... It was maybe... A, um one chapter about that part of it it was more about like i said more about her pregnant what was happening to her while she was pregnant what was happening to um to her while she was in a she was in a medical induced coma because of what was going on with her um it was a very interesting read um but yeah i gave it four stars <clears throat> So that is the end of this reading vlog this week. I'll probably film Monday. I am already starting my second reading vlog. And next week's is going to be a full week of me reading on my Kindle. So look forward to that. I'll uh, let you know then what, um, what books I'm reading. Because I have a couple of ARC books I have to read. And then there's these new Valentine novellas. That was exclusive to the Amazon Kindle. So maybe I'll be reading those. So, anyways, that is my video this week. Come back next week if you want to see what Kindle books I'll be reading. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little reading vlog. Um, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you're not yet subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to my channel. And next to the subscribe button is the bell. You can ring that to be notified of all my future uploads. And I hope you guys are having a great day, night, weekend, whenever it is you're watching this. And... I love you and so does Jesus. Bye guys.